Hi everyone, welcome to Planet Juju. Now, I reckon I'm pretty good these days at spotting a scam, but about 12 years ago, I was that person who received a phone call from a so-called Microsoft engineer who persuaded me to allow them to take remote access of my computer to help it to run better. I'd been having problems with my computer and put an error log into Microsoft a few days before, so when that phone call came, I had no idea it was a scam. It didn't get as far as me paying them money as I became suspicious and switched my computer off to cut them off from doing anything that I couldn't see, and I obviously ended the phone call. Whether or not they put some bad software on my computer, I don't know, but it did result in more problems on my computer and cost me a new hard drive. It made me feel sick and violated for a long time, and since then I've become much more aware and suspicious of scams. I promise myself I won't do that again. I promise myself I won't do that again. But I still see people, including members of my own family, being scammed, and it really upsets me that people are being targeted this way. As time goes on, scammers keep finding new and ingenious ways of extracting money from people, and none of us, including me, are immune. So I'm going to be doing some videos on scam examples I've come across and show you some of the things to look for that should start raising suspicions for you. The first one is called an impersonation or imposter scam. It's where a scammer contacts you pretending to be a business or organisation that you do business with. I belong to an organisation called the National Field Archery Society, NAFAS. It's a membership group of over 6,000 archers. In November 2021, a large proportion of members were targeted by email. The first time I received the email, I was, for a split second, ready to sign up for lifetime membership. It would save so much hassle after all. But then, of course, there are so many red flags. Hello, Archer. Many membership organisations have a mail merge system, which would address members by name. But they do know I'm an Archer. How? I'll come back to that later. National Field Archery Society staff. NAFAS officers don't refer to themselves as staff. They're volunteers and would refer to themselves as a committee. Your are eligible. Spelling error. NB. Only NeoSurf vouchers are accepted for this offer. Never heard of NeoSurf vouchers, but I'm certain NAFAS would require payment to its own bank account. Gift cards are popular with scammers as they're more difficult to intercept and trace compared to bank transfers and they can be used to launder money. So be wary if you receive a request from someone asking you to buy one or more gift cards to pay for something. The seats are very limited. Seats for what? This is supposed to refer to membership of an archery society, not a spectator event. It's worth noting here that scammers will try to create a sense of false urgency because it's more easy to be pulled into something without thinking about it for too long if there's a time limit or if there are only a few opportunities remaining. It's a well-known marketing ploy that shifts stock quickly. People respond to calls to action. While we're talking about calls to action, I have a limited number of subscriptions available, so if you want to be one of the lucky few who gets to see my videos as soon as they're published, then please subscribe and click that notification bell now before it's too late. Go on, you know you want to. So then we go to reply to this email for more details. And I look at the email they say to reply to. Although it says National Field Archery Society, the email address is for something completely different, and that should definitely ring alarm bells. There were some variations on the theme, including this one, which, as well as wanting you to buy Amazon vouchers, was also then wanting you to fill in a form with all your personal details. As well as defrauding people out of money, they are then trying a spot of phishing. Cases of impersonation scams, like this gift card trap, have risen dramatically in recent years. 
in the first six months of 2021, a total of £129.4 million was lost to these scams, and that was a 123% increase on 2020. It's still unclear how the scammers got a whole list of members' emails on a database, as the organisation investigated the matter and they said they had not been hacked. Some members had email addresses used that weren't used for anything else, and others had old email addresses used as well. My personal opinion is that possibly a past member of the committee or someone with a dated file of members' emails on their personal computer had been hacked. So what can you do? Well, for a start, don't take the bait and click on any links, as that may result in viruses or malware being downloaded into your device. You can report it to the organisation the scammers are impersonating and that should help with their investigations. If you see an email address from a known email provider such as Gmail, then you can report it to them too to try and get the account closed. Do not reply to any emails or messages. Once you reply, you're on a list of contacts to try scamming again, so just delete the message. To stop specific emails coming through and catching you out at a vulnerable moment, you can create a filter in your email account with some common words that appear on the email and instruct the filter to delete them or move them into your spam folder for review. Well, I hope you found that useful. If you've been wondering about the music in this video, it was written and performed by my friend Roger Payne. I'll be putting a link to the whole song in the description and comments section. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon. The gentleman said just sign on the dotted line We're gonna make you rich and famous for a year It's just a matter of time Ooh, should have seen it coming Ooh, should have started running for the door Running for my life, running to get